In this video today, I'm going to be looking at the first things you should do with a new Windows 10 laptop. Now the video assumes that you've done the initial setup and you've logged on to Windows for the first time. I'll be demonstrating this video today using a new Lenovo IdeaPad 3, which I bought recently. So I'll be sharing some really useful tips with you on the setup of your machine so you can get the best of your machine. But before we jump into the detail, if you're new to this channel and you want help solving your tech related questions like this and on other types of tech, start now by subscribing to our channel for our regular product review and how to videos. OK, so let's dive right into the detail now on the first things you should do with a new Windows 10 laptop. OK, so now the laptop has been set up in terms of the initial configurations like the Microsoft username, password, country settings, etc. We're now going to look at just basically tailoring the laptop itself. So let's first start by looking at checking for updates. And the reason we're doing this is because updates can actually happen in the background whilst we're doing other things. So if we type on updates there and it says no updates are available. So, but it says your device is missing important security and quality fixes. So let's just check that there. I'll just let that run for a few moments. OK, so basically it's saying that we need to download a lot of different updates. So if you look there, it's basically going through the process of installing and updating various updates. Now, some people don't like updates on their computer. It's something which I do because it, I feel personally it helps me with latest updates, information, etc. But that's obviously entirely up to you. So. Now that's there, we can leave that running in the background and we will come back to that shortly. Another really useful thing which I do here is change active hours. So basically, one thing you may find is that when you're using your device, do you ever find that, for example, it switches off and update, um, reboots for updates? Sometimes mine does that and that's really annoying, especially if you've got some work which you're working on, which is really important. So um, here you can actually change the active hours. So you can set the active hours to let you know when you typically use this device and it won't automatically restart your device during this time. So I advise that's something you can really take advantage of. So basically you can either turn it on or you can get it to automatically adjust the active hours for this device based on activity. So I'm going to actually turn it on here. And my working hours is, the current active hours is eight till five. So that is absolutely fine. So we we'll go ahead and leave that as that. And in the meantime, we can let Windows do its updates in the background, okay? So if we just minimize that window. Now, the next thing we need to do is if we go to privacy settings, privacy is really important for me, is basically, as I pointed out earlier, when we were actually initially setting up the computer. So we can actually change our privacy settings. So let apps use advertising ID. We turned that off earlier. Let websites provide locally relevant content by existing language list and we turn that off. Let Windows track app launches and improve start and search results. I'm going to turn that off and show me suggested content in the app settings. So I'm going to turn all of those off the general privacy options. So now we've looked at all of that, the next thing we need to do is look at something called bloatware. So this is preloaded apps or programs which are put onto your computer and they can really slow it down at the start. So if we type in the search bar, if we type in program and add or remove programs. Now we can actually look through this list here and what I'd suggest is you just, just spend a few minutes going through it and to remove anything you don't want from the computer. OK, anything that we don't particularly need. So if we go through it, McAfee Security, we're going to install our own antivirus protection at a later date. But for the purposes of today, we're going to uninstall that because we don't want McAfee Security because we don't use McAfee. And if we just run through the list here, if there's anything else that we see that we don't like, we're going to take it off. OK, an Xbox really popular out there, but it's not something that we use. So I'm going to uninstall that and I'm going to uninstall Xbox Live. OK, so you just you've got to get the idea about that. It's just a case of removing programs, which are maybe free trials or programs that you don't actually need on your computer. So I've removed those from the laptop. We'll be looking at adding some apps or programs to our laptop in a few minutes. But before you do that, it's highly recommended that you run some form of antivirus 
and anti-malware on your machine to ensure that you protect it. I'm now going to go onto the internet. So if we choose the internet now, this is where I'm actually going to add a number of apps or programs, which I use regularly, regularly on a laptop. Now, years ago, I used to go to lots of different websites and add them individually, very time consuming. It's a bit long winded. So I use a site now called, so if you go to nanite.com, um, basically what this is, it's, it's, it's trusted by millions, it says. So they install and update a million apps each day for home users and subscribers. You don't need to be a subscriber. But before we go any further, there's something really important that I want to talk to you about today regarding the downloading and installation of apps or programs onto your computer. Now, this laptop comes with Windows 10 Home in S mode. It's the S mode that I want to talk to you about. Now, you may well have never heard of S mode, but it may be running on your PC. And basically what it does, according to what I've read between the lines, is it helps keep your device secure and actually only allows you to download apps or programs from the Microsoft Store. Now, it also apparently helps with performance and Microsoft actually say that it's designed for security, it's designed for speed and simplicity. But just to point out that if it is running on your machine, the S mode, you can actually only download verified apps from the Microsoft Store. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. If you want to actually download apps or programs which aren't in the Microsoft Store from a third party provider, then you'll need to actually switch your machine to running actually Windows 10 Home without the S mode. So a key point here is that if you decide to actually switch out of S mode at any point, maybe like me, you want to download apps which aren't available from the Microsoft Store, so you don't have a choice. But if you do actually switch out of S mode, then basically there's no way you can actually switch back after this change has been made. So I just really wanted to point this out to you today. So if you consider making changes to your system, you just maybe need to read between the lines a bit about what the implications are on top of what I've just told you today. Plus a website, which I'm going to show you in a moment, where you can download a lot of apps and programs from one single source, won't actually work if the laptop is in S mode. So I'll be making the change to Windows 10 Home and actually coming out of S mode. So let's carry on with the video. So it's a case of just, if you like, loading this, these apps onto your computer and it's from one place, so it's dead easy. So we're going to upload Chrome. Okay, and when they're done, it's just a case of clicking get your Nanite. So download, so the installer begin download is short there, or you can retry if it doesn't work. So it's just a case of clicking run. So it's saying for security reasons, performance windows 10 S mode runs Microsoft verified apps. To get this app, you need to switch out of S mode. So we're going to do that now. Obviously, you need to read more about Nanite and understand it. And if you're happy with it, but I'm going to just pop into S mode now. Switch to Windows 10. So Windows 10 Home in S mode keeps help your device secure by any verified apps. Switch to Windows 10 Home to install apps that aren't offered in Microsoft Store. So I'm going to go there now and switch out of S mode. Okay, so if we just minimize that again, and I'm going to try and re retry and download. So we're going to run that. Okay, so we'll minimize that and let that run in the background. Now, the next thing I want to do to personalize, if you like, make changes to the computer is if we go to the start menu and we can actually pin some of the programs that we use regularly to the taskbar. So it's just a case of going through it. Um, right click, we'll get Outlook at some point in the near future. So if we pin that to the taskbar here, as you can see, and photos again we also use fairly regularly so we're going to pin that to the taskbar there okay and looking at the actual taskbar itself looking at these here things we don't want pinned on the bar so you right click and unpin from the taskbar the Lenovo program and if we look at that one there we've got Meerkat as well so I don't really want that at all and happy with the other ones which are actually on the taskbar itself okay so the next thing we're going to do is personalize a desktop right click so if we go into personalize 
Let's wait for that for a moment. And the background, don't particularly like it, so I'm just going to choose a solid color for now. And let's pick a blue color, okay? And then that changes it there, okay? The lock screen, that's another thing we'll look at as well. So on here, you've got various different options. So we're going to go down to where it says screensaver settings. I do have a screensaver because it gives me a bit of security and it asks for a login. So if we just can either choose a screensaver or we can just, well, let's choose blank for the purposes of today. And if we just wait for 10 minutes and apply that, okay. And when we go in, when the screensaver comes on and we go back into it, we'll have to put our pin or our password into there to access it. So that's done there, okay. So another setting that we want to do is turn on dark mode for apps because I quite like using that so if you type dark mode into the bar there choose your color so if we select dark that's absolutely fine okay so apps will sort of choose the dark mode side of things so we really like that as well the next thing we're going to do is look at the task bar button as you can see here so we right clicked on the actual taskbar itself. So just some of the things you might want to look at is you've got the Cortana button here. We don't use that, so I'm not going to use that. So just unclick that task view button. I'll leave that on because basically that lets us see virtual desktops. So that's absolutely fine. OK, let's come back out of that and other things on there, people on taskbar, we don't want that. Windows Ink workspace button, we're going to add that because that enables us to take full screen snips, etc. Whiteboard, so that's really useful. So I like using that. Touch keyboard button, we don't want that. Any of those we can put and also show the desktop there. So whenever you go to the button there, that works with that. And then taskbar settings itself. So on the taskbar, we can lock it if we want to. So we'll leave that on, but automatically hide the taskbar in desktop mode. Let's do that because I don't like it showing sometimes. I know it works for some people, not others. So that's absolutely fine. Taskbar, small taskbar buttons, we'll leave the rest of those as off. And those as on. Taskbar location on the screen, we'll leave that on the bottom. You can actually put it on the top left or side, etc. So they're the settings that we want to make changes to there, okay? So the next thing we're going to do is look at notifications. So I do a lot of detailed work and I don't like being disturbed. So notifications and action center, if you type that in that bar there, get notifications from apps and other senders. I actually turn that off. OK, and then it's entirely up to you. If you want to show me the Windows welcome experience and get tips and tricks again, you can leave those on or off. I'm not particularly worried about that, but the main thing is to turn the notifications off from senders. OK, so the next thing we're going to do is look at startup programs. And basically what happens is apps can be figured to start when you log in. So this can actually sh slow your computer down if it comes on as soon as you log in. So just looking at this Alexa. OK, that's off already. Intel graphics will leave that. The Nova utility, Microsoft OneDrive will leave that on real audio we'll leave that on Spotify okay that's off already and so that's absolutely fine there's not too many on there which is going to slow our machine down when we start sometimes there could be lots of different apps start up as soon as the machine comes on so it can slow it down so you can actually turn them off there okay so the next thing we're going to do is tweak the performance settings so basically this adjusts between quality and speed. So if we type in performance there and click adjust the appearance. So let Windows choose what's best for my computer, adjust for best appearance, adjust for best performance. So I, I use a lot of quite heavy resource programs like image processing, editing, etc. So I'm just going to type in there adjust for, adjust for best performance and click OK. Basically, it, it stops all the fancy stuff, as I call it, happening. So, but again, it depends on what you require. And as you'll see here, Nanite is actually now complete. So it says 
Chrome, OneDrive, Zoom, Evernote, Malware Bytes, the status is all okay. So if we go into the start menu, we will see here that some of these are, or oh, sorry, it will show that these are basically installed. I've also put together some further computer related videos for you. So if you want to know how to connect your laptop to your TV using HDMI, you can click on the link now. Alternatively, you may want to connect an external monitor to your laptop, maybe use an old monitor that you have. Again, you can click on the link appearing on screen now. But many thanks for watching our video today. We'll see you on the next one.